This is a short tutorial illustrating how to use the Group ICA fMRI Toolbox GIFT provided by the Medical Image Analysis Lab. This software is provided free of charge on their website, which can be located quickly by using Google. MIA Lab provides a number of free programs for the analysis of EEG and fMRI data using independent component analysis, including a simulation program and a program for group comparisons. Each toolbox requires a recent version of MATLAB to be installed on the computer. The documentation link provides a technical manual for how to use the software and a walkthrough using example data, which can be downloaded along with the toolbox. You must provide your institutional information in order to download the toolbox. Make sure to download the version appropriate to your operating system, along with the example data. These will both be zipped files that you can save to your Downloads or Documents folder and extract the files from the zipped file. If you are a KU student using the Edustat remote desktop computers, save your information to the D drive under Users in the folder with your username. You can extract the files here, but I suggest you create a specially named folder where you can extract the software, store the example data, and have a third folder for all your output. If you open your example data, you will notice three folders, one for each subject, and another folder with the single slices from the same experiment. You can move or delete the single slice folder because we want to make sure the toolbox finds the correct files to analyze. The ICATB folder stands for ICA Toolbox, and it stores all of the MATLAB programs. You will not need to add to or change anything in this folder. Open the MATLAB program by typing MATLAB into the Start menu search bar. In the MATLAB command window, tell MATLAB where to find the toolbox programs by typing add path as one word and pasting the path to the ICATB folder. You can copy this from the Windows Explorer, then paste it after add path and press enter. Now that MATLAB knows where to find GIFT, type GIFT in the command window and press Enter. The GUI, or graphical user interface, for GIFT will now appear. Before you begin, create a folder where you can store your output. Because you may choose to analyze the data more than once using different parameters, create a sensible naming convention for the subfolders within the output folder. In GIFT, click on Set up ICA Analysis and paste your output directory in the top line. Copy this path name in Windows Explorer so that it will be easy to tell GIFT where to find it. Notice at the bottom that there is still no directory selected. Click back to go to the parent folder and notice that when you click on the correct folder in the left menu, it takes you right back into that subfolder. In order to actually select this folder, click back and then click on the correct output folder in the right-hand menu. Directories selected now indicates 1, so you can click OK. I would use the same or similar naming convention for your output files as you do for your output folders. I will use the fast ICA algorithm for the first example, so I will include that in the file name prefix. Then click Select to tell GIFT where to find the fMRI data files. Locate the proper directory by clicking back and selecting the correct folder in the right-hand menu just as you did before. When you find the folder with three subject subfolders, 
click back and then select that folder. Data for all subjects will be analyzed at once, so you can store each subject's subfolder in the same folder. All data should be pre-processed prior to analysis using ICA. In the next window, notice that the program will accept multiple kinds of image files in the same analysis. All our example data is .img, so you can keep the default. This experiment has only one session, so change yes to no for that option. By default, GIFT will analyze all files unless you specify a certain range only. Click on InfoMax and choose the Fast ICA algorithm instead. Use all other defaults unless you know why to specify something else. Notice that in MATLAB, the output folder has been populated by MATLAB files, which are created for you during this process. So the correct parameter file should be visible when that window appears, so you merely need to select this file for the analysis. However, if you ever need to rerun an analysis, you can jump straight to this step and select the appropriate past file by clicking Run Analysis when GIFT first opens. Click OK and run all analysis steps, unless you need to see one thing specifically. As long as you have at least 2 gigs of RAM on your computer, any settings will work fine. MATLAB will analyze the data once you click OK, and simply wait for the next GIFT window to appear once the analysis step is done. In the Visualization Methods window, Notice that you can inspect the components one subject at a time, or you can look at the tmap or mean across all subjects. Remember that group comparisons are not made in this program. Look instead for Gypsy, spelled G-I-P-C, on the MIA site. Select the mean at the top of the list, then click Display. A series of windows with four subjects per window will appear, but you can jump from one to the other simply by clicking the arrows at the bottom of any of the windows. The images include all slices moving from the top of the skull at the top left to the bottom. Red indicates some activation and more activation is indicated with brighter yellow colors. Notice that above the figures for each component there is a time series to show how that pattern of activation changed over time. This was a block design with two conditions. A visual task for each visual field. See the appendix in the manual to learn more about this experimental paradigm. The time patterns we are looking for should have a fairly, fairly smooth pattern like we see in components 1 and 6. Component 4 also appears to be a predictable pattern, but it may be only transiently related to the task. You can see the same components for an individual subject. and you can also see the components from each axis of orientation so that you can get a better idea of which brain areas have the pattern of activation you're interested in. Select Orthogonal Viewer and select the first or sixth component. The Composite Viewer is especially useful 
because you can map both components onto the same figure in different colors. Click on one component and then hold Command or Control and click on the other component, then click OK. See that the time series are what we'd expect to find for this visual task presented to each visual field. You can save any of these figures by clicking File, Save As, and choose Bitmap, JPEG, PDF, among others. Now we can create a second test folder for the next output using the Infomax algorithm. Repeat the same steps from above, but specify the correct folder and algorithm. You will notice that the results are not identical, but the components 8 and 11 are similar to the prior components 1 and 6. If your results are robust, you should see the same patterns appear using multiple algorithms. There is also the option of looking at a single component and comparing each subject's activation for that component by using the subject viewer. When you are finished, click the X and type exit in the MATLAB command window. You'll be able to view the results again the next time you open MATLAB. 